Africa When me go sail up the sweet river Gambia, yeah, me, yeah. me come forth with God in me heart To break Babylon apart Me just a come from Welcome, viewers, to the African Healing Podcast with Dr. Sherry Manjara Tomlin Tal. And today we have a special guest here with us in our studio, uh, Dr. Rick Wallace, a psychologist uh, who's practicing in Houston, Texas. Correct? Correct, correct. Yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Rick Wallace holds a dual doctorate degree in theology and psychology. He is recognized internationally for his work in performance psychology and trauma healing and he works with clients in Europe, Africa, Australia, Canada, and the Caribbean. In addition to his academic success, Dr. Wallace has experienced a great deal of business success. And over the past 35 years, he has founded, launched, and brought more than 47 companies to profitability. He is now the current founder and CEO of Rick Wallace Enterprises, which includes subsidiaries like the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, and Publishing, Master Fitness 21, the Financial Brain Thrust, Myriad Business Solutions, and more. And so his passion has been saving young Black boys, and that's been revealed in the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative. And this is a program created to fill the gap of missing fathers in the Black community. And so, Dr. Wallace, welcome to the African Healing Podcast today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. We need to educate our people where things have been breaking down. And now that we're at that point, and it's going to take 50 to 100 years to build certain institutions and have certain structures. Right. But right now, with AI emerging, mm -hmm. Dr. How can we now have the advantage? Because, you know, a lot of uh, Korean, Indian, Chinese, everyone has brought up, you know, bought out the businesses the, uh, in our neighborhoods, the, you know, the stores in our communities. They own those things and they have the power that we should have. Right. So now, how could we reclaim <laughs> our rightful place in this universe in this you know global system uh using ai oh man you 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 hit a sweet spot when you talked about ai i started hearing about ai maybe four or five years ago seriously i've been hearing about it a long time but i started to really say okay the the reverberations of its oncoming are starting to get loud i can feel the vibration so this is no longer uh simply an idea this is really happening we actually have the structure in place and there are actually government agencies already using it been using it for years and now it's coming into mainstream and so i started getting with my tech guys a couple of my clients were programmers and cybersecurity, so they had an understanding of what's going on. they sort of kind of explained to me what it was going to look like how it was going to be and so i started studying it before it ever hit so that i could start using it so i've been using it for over a year in the creation of programs and online courses and and uh asking it for research and understanding different movements in the markets and a whole bunch of stuff. So everything from investing to starting businesses and launching businesses, scaling businesses and growing businesses, monetizing ideas, all of this stuff is going to be possible. I'm actually doing a webinar on Friday uh, to teach people uh, how to um, monetize and leverage the power of AI. And I've only marketed this webinar to my people. Like me, I signed up. I'm, I'll am i be there Friday. So how do, are you allowing any more? Uh, yeah. Um, we sign up if you haven't signed up already. Right. So let me see if I can actually find that link real quick. Um, I think I know it's here. But yeah, so I'm going to be teaching that um, uh, on Friday. How, how will this be a game changer for our people? It's a game changer. And one thing, well, when I had my crash in um, um, uh, when I had my crash in um, the end of like 2007, 2008, like I said, I went through a very rough time where 
the businesses that I had built were hit hard. I made a couple of decisions that weren't uh, probably the best. I was a little arrogant. I was in this zone. I was like, if I touched it, it was turning to gold. And so I got a little arrogant and cocky and didn't follow, you know, a lot of protocols and kind of cut some corners and it cost me. And what I decided was I got to do it over. But the beautiful thing about understanding and knowing something is if you do get found, if you do find yourself in that place, you say, I've done it before. So it was never like, oh my God, it's over for me. It was like, okay, I get to do it again. And this time I get to do it better. Right. The, first, the first thing that I looked at was this internet thing. You got to understand, you know, Facebook was new. Twitter was new. Instagram was like a baby. And MySpace had did okay, but Facebook had pushed it out the way. YouTube was still, you know, what, you know, whatever. And so I'm like, but but this internet is going to change the world. And so it's going to take me from being a person that's got to be booked and flown somewhere to literally being able to sit in someone's home from where I'm sitting and deliver virtually. So I said, this is where I'm going to start rebuilding. So I literally started rebuilding and launching different entities and companies and doing things. And so this is before AI. This is, you know, when I first started, we were still using HTML to build sites. Now you can sit up and build sites on different platforms. I use primarily WordPress when I build sites for my clients, but I use a number of other uh, creations as well. But anyway, you get to AI now and a lot of the guesswork is taken out. All right. And the automation end of it is there. So now you take an idea and you can ask through prompts. Prompts are key elements of how to use open AI, chat, GPT, all these different forms. And these tools are just rolling out the box of different ways. You can create art. You can, uh, you can literally make such a unique customer experience that you literally create this place. And one of the things that I do in my seven-day online business launch course is I teach people this blueprint that I used starting 13 years ago to literally create these online entities. And one of the things is you need to know how to do a business plan. AI can help you with that. You know, I create templates for business plans for my clients so that they can just say, go fill it out. And when you finish, you'll have a business plan. All right, you have to have marketing analysis. So you need to do marketing research. You need to be able to do a marketing analysis, understand that you can, do, you can pull customer intel. Customer intelligence is everything you need to know about your target audience to be able to present them the products, the services, and the engagement they need. You can improve customer service. So now you've got all these automated processes that are rendering to you what precisely, and now we got to a point where the first version, which I think stopped being programmed and taught in September of 2021, which is chat GPT. So it's good to 2021. Now you got stuff like um, Web I, 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 I got so many pulled up right here. Jounce. Uh, you have Right Sonic, which literally pulls from the internet. So now it's not just what it's been taught to do. It takes what it's been trained to do, and it will sit up and it will actually go search the internet for the most recent answers. Not only that, it will allow you to upload your own material, and it will render. Uh, whatever you ask it to produce in your tone, in the way that you write, it'll study you and produce stuff the way you would have produced it, but it's going to do it at a much rapid pace. So now you scale out and you step back. And so that's what I've been doing over the last year. I've been doing a lot less one-on-ones and I've been doing a lot more program development that allows me to scale out because I don't have to be present to present it. Now, there's still something to be said for the human element. I'm still most effective when I'm sitting face to face and I'm working solely one on one with you. But it's like it literally you're only limited. Uh, and I tell people all the time, you're only limited by, by what you're willing to ask or what you're willing to seek or what you're willing to try. And the more you push it, the more you'll discover and the more you'll learn. So it's going to cut learning curves. It's going to open up opportunities. One of the things the internet did for me is it almost completely eliminated the racial uh, the racial component. Now, now, what I mean by that is the only areas, all of my businesses aren't branded with my image. And one of the things I try to teach black business owners 
is you need to learn how to raid their economies because that's what they do to us. Yeah. Yes, you know, yes, we want to support black businesses, but we want black businesses that provide services outside the black community. We only make up a, what 13% of this population. We want we want to be able to create products that they want. Why? Because that's their money. Now, when they give us our, their money, we need to do what they do. They we we give them our money. We spend, I tell people all the time. We're the only people in the history of the world that I could find that finance our own demise by how much money we spend into the economy of the oppressor. Now, now here's the thing, though. If we create things, and they love our stuff, too. That's the beauty of it. They absolutely love our stuff. I know. They stole, like, how much art from back in the day? I mean, oh yeah, we're still just finding stuff that they stole. Right. <laughs> and so what happens is, we need to learn how to sell. So I have entities that you can't go there and see that a black man owns it. That's the beauty of it. That's also the beauty of most things. When you get on the internet, if you want to reach a larger audience, you get to create the brand in the way that it does it. Now, I am branded in a lot of things that I want my people to get a hold to because they need to see a black face. They need to see that you can have success. And the thing that I actually probably... Win, win, Go ahead, now, go ahead. The thing I probably actually celebrate the most about myself is my academic achievements. You know, I am a, am a, a hound for now. I, I've had a white guy that I studied and I got up under him because he taught me a lot. And he said, you are an absolute knowledge hound. I know when you call me that no matter what you're going to say, that actually you're trying to fish my brain. And he said, I absolutely love it. But what happens is, uh, I, I enjoy more the things that I've done outside of academia because the, th the true nature is everything that I've learned, I could have learned without the degrees, mm -hmm. but there were certain doors that wouldn't open if I didn't have them. And there were certain people who wouldn't listen if the yeah. letters weren't behind my name. But the things that I teach, I knew before I had the degrees. Matter of fact, the first degree, the, the institution came to me and asked me what I enroll in their program. Mm -hmm. We want you in this program because we want you to approach this particular situation. And so that's how it started. And so I exited my academic career. I think I'm done. I don't think I want to go back and get nothing else. I exited my academic career owing zero dollars. Mm -hmm. Not one dime that I ever borrow. Mm -hmm. And that's just understanding my value. You want me in your program. This is what I've already done. You want me in your program. This is what I want from you. So I've negotiated my way into spaces. And then I was invited into other spaces because of that. But what I like is to show people, look, all you have to do is have a vision. Believe in the vision. Pursue the vision. Make the adjustments along the way. And over time, you get it. You live in a universe that God designed to reciprocate your energy and your efforts. No man can stop that white or no other uh, no other source can stop you from being what you were designed to be amen brother so dr rick wallace what you're telling us today <clears throat> is that ai has the potential to break down these racial barriers as far as businesses you know because black businesses suffer you know because like you said our people <laughs> believe that the other folks, their water is colder, their ice is colder, so they go over there. But now with AI, how's that going to, uh, you know, promote our black businesses if without people knowing that they're black business? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's simple. Uh, you choose imagery. Uh, you can say create a logo. AI, there's a, there's an AI tool that'll create the logo. You can tell the what your business is what it does, and it will literally generate multiple options. Uh, you can set your ads up to be run via AI. You can ask it um, the best wording for sales copy. You can, it's, I mean, and, 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 and I'm just scratching the surface. It's, so in essence, you choose first and foremost. And what I tell people, one of the things I teach in my seven day online course is, this is what a business is. When you sit up saying, I wanna start a business. All a business is, is you looking at your current skill set and saying, what problem can I solve? Right. 
One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when it comes to business is they say, man, I love this. So I'm going to create this and then I'm going to go to find people who like it. That's the backwards way to do it. People create stuff they like. Then you got to go find other people who like it. No, what you do is you find a large group that has a problem and you say, do I have the skill set to solve the problem? And the thing that AI does is even if you don't have the skill set to solve the problem, ask AI. AI gives you the background information. You develop the skill set. So you can start off in one area, develop a skill set, say, over two or three years, and then double back down. And you can go from charging $99 for this to $9,000 for that over three years. You increase your revenue exponentially over that time. And AI simply gave you the, the little structure through which to do it. And so a lot of things that you don't have, that you may have in the past had to go out and hire four or five different people to give you that structure, you now just have to simply understand what you need and how to ask AI to do it. And then the beautiful thing about it, if you don't know what to ask AI, ask AI what to ask it. I mean, it's that dope. I mean, so uh, I get excited just thinking about it because I look at what I've done in researching it for four years and then using it for a year and realize I haven't even gotten started yet. So those five, six, seven people that we no longer need, uh, I'm probably going to be one of them because AI, you know, is going to be able to assess the patient, prescribe the medication in the future. So where does that leave uh, us being um, ahead of the curve is in that area as far as not being uh phased out or right, right. so work. so what here's what happens goldman sachs has predicted that over the next year or so between the next year and year and a half to two years that ai will replace or eliminate three million jobs globally 300 million jobs globally that's 300 million jobs that currently exist that will not exist as they exist now because of AI. The first thing that the average person does is because we've been conditioned and trained to believe that the system controls your opportunity is, oh my God, they're phasing me out. No, they just gave you a tool to blow this whole thing up. You've got to start asking questions differently. You've got to look at it. So, okay, if, they, if now AI is going to be doing this, where do you need to be? You need to be the person that's controlling access to the AI that does the assessments. So you need to be the person that says, OK, what role can I play in this? How can I? And the crazy thing is, Jerry, is you can go ask AI. If I am a DMP right now and eventually AI will start doing the uh, assessments and prescriptions and all of this, how do I leverage that? and see what AI tells you. It, but that's the thing, you got this thing, imagine everybody's brain in one place, mm. all the genius of the world in one place, and everything that you said, that's why I, there's so much knowledge that we haven't tapped in. And the reason is we, we, we've been pigeonholed into believe this is your opportunity, and you can only have this opportunity if so-and-so gives it to you. And now what the internet has done and now add AI to it, it says, I don't need your permission to be great. Wow. So I'm going to step from underneath the ceiling of what you tell me I can do as a DMP. And I'm going to venture out into this universe. Because remember, what we're doing right now with this visual, uh, with this, with this Zoom meeting and this virtual meeting is we're doing what they showed us on the Jetsons in the 1960s. <laughs> and everybody said, man, that'll never happen. Oh, man, that's crazy. And what happens is somebody decided I wasn't going to stay in the box. We have cell phones. Well, first of all, we had regular telephones as kids growing up because Alexander Graham Bell said, I'm not going to stay in the box. You were able to fly to Africa because Orville and Wilbur said, I'm not satisfied with riding. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create something to fly. And everybody told them they were absolutely ridiculously stupid. And they got outside of the box. People are... I saw where a high schooler broke a, a record that had stood for I don't know how long in the high school ranks. But we've got middle schoolers running miles 
uh, that was once times in the mile that was once considered impossible. Roger Bannister broke the four minute barrier in 1954. Before that, it was believed that a four minute running under four minutes in a mile was impossible. Not only did people believe it was impossible, they believed that if you ran the mile in under a minute, you wouldn't live to celebrate it because your heart would explode. <laughs> so Roger Bannister, now here's the beauty of it. Roger Bannister ran the mile in 1954 in under four minutes, broke the uh, four, four minute barrier. And they asked him, what did you do? How did you train? What did you eat? If I was asking all these questions, he says, I didn't change anything in my physical training. I ran it 1000 times in my mind. Mm -hmm. That's the power of the human mind. If you unleash the mind, nothing is impossible because everything that we think is impossible or what uh, is being proven to be possible. Every, all the things we're experiencing now was once thought to be impossible. Here's the crazy thing. Over the next two over the next two years, 2,000 people ran the mile in under four minutes. You want to know why? <laughs> it stopped being impossible. Right. Now, you've got over 40,000 people who have done it, and some of them are teenagers. They haven't even fully developed into their full physical capacity. It's not even a thing anymore to run the mile in under four minutes. Mm -hmm. But it was once thought impossible. And so what we have to do as a people is to start to explore the beauty of who we are. Remember, we create the freaking pyramids. <laughs> so, I mean, our minds can go places. Right. So then what we need to start doing, think about it. Everything that has benefited agriculture and it came from our mind. Nobody wouldn't commit, nobody but a black man created the cotton gin. I'm tired of picking this pair of cotton. <laughs> hey. we gotta do. So, I mean, through necessity, we've created right. so much stuff. That same brilliance is there. You want to know how I know it's there? Take one of your kids, because I've, I'm, you know, I've got kids 37 to 9. Right. And take your kids, like my teenagers that, you know, that are growing up and coming adults now. Well, most of them are. I'm almost out of it. But you take them and say, OK, I'm going to block this on your phone because you don't need some block. Those kids within a matter of minutes have figured a way around that block that these geniuses at Verizon and IBM and everybody else created. They've, they've circumvented it in minutes yeah. and created an entire way to do it that you can't track and trace. Mm -hmm. I've watched them. And, and, you know, my only reason I can keep up because I'm dealing with tech and I'm learning and I'm going, so I'm like, I know what you did. And so I have, but I'm, as soon as I get that, they are ready to the next solution. It's like, you don't, you're not going to catch me. I'm going to do this. Exactly. Now, but, that's, yeah. but, but imagine that same brilliance being applied to something that says, I'm not going to be poor. I'm not going to suffer. I'm not going to beg for crumbs off of a table when I can build a whole house myself. And so that's what we're talking about here. And so uh, with this AI thing, uh, what I'm doing is I'm get, uh, I'm doing the webinar. The webinar is going to be somewhere around two hours. I'm going to do a 30 to an hour Q&A after. Uh, I'm giving away my seven-day online business launch course. That's a 600 course, $600 course. I'm giving away the Mind Unleashed course, which we just talked about unleashing the mind. That's a $600 course. And I'm having a drawing where I'm going to draw one name and one person is going to get to work with me for a year. This is a $15,000 package, but I'm giving it away. And uh, again, I've only marketed this to my people because this is something I want to bless my people with because the average person can't afford to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And that one person is going to be challenged one way from me outside of the things I'm going to push them hard to do while I'm working with them is that you've got to bless 10 other people. You've got, and see one thing that I've always said, uh, and I'm pretty sure you've heard me say this before is some people look to affect the lives of other people. I look to infect people and people say, what does that mean? Uh, when you're infectious, it, in, it, you being in medicine, understanding when you're infectious, it means you're contagious. So when I infect people, I infect them with passion. I infect them with confidence. I infect them with faith. I infect them with a dream. And what happens? Infected people infect other people. So I get to touch lives of people I never meet because I'm infectious. And so what I train people to do is be infectious. Don't just share something with somebody. Share it in a way that they get excited about it to someone else. Ask them why you're excited. 
And now you're sharing with them why you're excited. You just affected someone else with an infection someone else gave you. That's how you change this situation is we've got to be, be infectious about the possibilities, infectious about our brilliance, infectious about what's capable. And we change the entire trajectory. We've got to stop consulting outside of ourselves for permission to be what we are designed to be. Fantastic, Dr. Rick Wallace. Well said. <laughs> and there's so much more that I wanted to, you know, uh, talk with you about, discuss with you today. But um, I hope you will agree to come back. <laughs> oh, most definitely. <laughs> For most another definitely. podcast with us here, because we didn't even uh, have the ch- opportunity to talk about love, romance, and relationships, which is what a lot of people are. Um, you know, um, wanting to get more advice about and, you know, uh, so we would have to schedule that down the road, but, um, what you have told us today is not only mind blowing, I just give you kudos to you and Dr. Blanchard as well for, you know, being so determined to get through and to break through, you know, uh, the, blocks and barriers that's existing in our community and that's what it takes we we can't give up so we have so many people in our community that just give up so easily on their marriages on their businesses on their families you know on their lives their own lives you know so i uh i'm encouraged and i hope a lot of people that are watching us today are also encouraged to uh take advantage and find your place in what's gonna uh, be coming down the pipe with this AI and technology. I think right now, if you go to Africa, they, you just told us what your children do when when you try to block them. I mean, if you go to Africa without any degree, without any resources, they they master technology over there. Right. Imagine the Africa and the American, you know, black community, just like dominating this thing. This is like, and, I, and, and I, I agree 100%. I think that that's the thing that we've got to push. We've got to get it. And it's going to take some time if we're honest with ourselves, because the programming is so entrenched to do things their way and to dismiss something that's coming from black people um, that, you know, I look at the minds that you mentioned, Dr. Michael Blanchard, Dr. Amos Wilson, uh, Dr. Uh, Joy DeGru, Dr. Naeem Agbar, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, who is the reason I'm in psychology in the first place. Um, Dr. Howard Stevenson, uh, and I can go on Chancellor Williams. I can just literally go down the line. Uh, Yosef ben Yakinen. I mean, these brilliant minds that have come on and they set the standard. Mm-hmm. and we still lean towards other people's ideas about who we are when they don't benefit from us knowing. Right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm past that now. So my social media team is nextna.com, N-E-X-T-N-A-A.com. Check them out. Dr. Rick Wallace, his email, do you, should I give out your email, Dr. Yes. Wallace? People want to enroll in the AI course or any of his... Uh, you know, programs that can uh, change your life. If you want to, if you're ready to do some life changing um, strategies, please contact Dr. Rick Wallace. His email is CEO at the at sign Rick Wallace, PhD dot link. Okay. So your final words before we uh, wrap it up today, Dr. Wallace. Uh, I would I just want to encourage everybody who watches this to search out the best version of yourself. Stop consulting outside of yourself for who you can become and stop consulting your past. Stop asking your past for permission to become the great person you can become, because the answer isn't in your past. It's in your mind. It's in your imagination. It's in your dream. It's in your vision. And you haven't come close to what you're capable of becoming 
but you're going to have to pursue it. You're going to have to be committed to it and you're going to have to finish. I shared something on social media earlier today that I read sometime a long time ago that commitment is following through on what you following through and being law to what you said you were going to do long after the mood that caused you to say it has left. And people ask me all the time, how did you publish 26 books? How did you do this with this many companies? How did you do that and that? And it's because you're smart. It's because, no, I know what I know because I was persistent. If I had to define myself in one word and the success that I've achieved, relentless, not because I'm better than anybody, not because I have some special gift that no one else has, it's because I refuse to quit on my purpose. And when you make up in your mind that you're going to refuse to quit on your purpose, that's absolutely no one who can stop you. So I wish you the best. You are so amazing, Dr. Rick Wallace. I can't wait for you to join us again here on the African Healing Podcast. And I want you to have a blessed day. (laughs) Stay. You do the same. You do the same. It's always a pleasure. And I look forward to coming back. Yes. Thank you so much. I know you're on your way out somewhere. So.